Welcome at this very special moment. A product launch in a new reality, a virtual reality, yet very real. You are amongst the almost 400 participants to join us today. And the product that we are about to show you and present you will combine what we think are the most important radar characteristics any drone detection radar should have. Nobody's ever done that before and we're super proud that we did. You see, detecting big objects like ships or planes by radar is relatively easy because there's a lot of reflection coming back. But to detect small objects by radar like drones and birds, now that's a different ball game. That is our ball game. Robin, radar observation of bird intensity. It started out as a project within the Dutch Research Institute for Applied Science, TNO, in the 80s as a project for the Royal Dutch Air Force. Engineers were able to uncover the bird activity from raw radar data using the existing air defense radars. They helped the Dutch Air Force prevent collisions between birds and fighter jets. In 2010, I spun out all activities to pursue market leadership as a commercial entity. It started out great. We won a fantastic project from Amsterdam Schiphol Airport and got super investors on board. Then we had some tough years. We learned the hard way that though planes are fast, aviation is slow. That all changed in 2014 when our government, like many of yours, started to have some concerns about the misuse of small drones. Our government called upon the industry to come up with solutions. 38 companies responded, and Robin Radar became number one. It marked a new era for our company. We launched Elvira as the first purpose-built drone detection radar in the world. It was a super successful product and still is today. It made our company from loss making to becoming one of the fastest growing high-tech companies of the Netherlands. Not that we had forgotten about our heritage, of course. Because in the meantime, the sales of the bird radars increased as well, and we developed and launched a new full 3D phased array radar for birds called MAX. Now today, I don't think it's an overstatement to say that Robin Radar makes the best avian radars in the world. Our systems are being deployed at airports like Berlin, Frankfurt, Copenhagen, Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. And in the meantime, the counter-drone industry has exploded. Drones are in the news almost every day. And Elvira, well, she's being deployed all over the world too. We protect airports like Heathrow, military compounds, um, oil refineries, prisons. We've protected two US presidents and a whole bunch of other world leaders. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a brand new radar. It's revolutionary. It's a radar specifically designed to detect and track the enemy that we've encountered too often, especially over the last five years. And one that is causing you stress and sleepless nights. Drones. Anybody working in this industry knows that. Now, let's talk to some of those experts. First one is Daniela Hildenbrand. She's team lead of the counter unmanned air systems at ESG, a German reseller. Daniela, welcome in the show. First of all, did you sleep well last night? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sita. I slept quite all right. Um, but I have to say, I really love your slogan. Um, I think we share the same problem in the security industry, that the, the, the drone threat ever emerges, and it's really, it helps me sleep better that knowing that there are technologies out there that contribute to solving that challenge. Good to hear, Daniela. Um, I couldn't have said that better, of course. And now, if we look at the drone threat in general, how is that evolving um, today and in the future? Oh, well, yeah, we think um, that the drone threat is as imminent as it is today, as it will be in the future. And as, as I just said, the, the drone threat itself evolves really dynamically. And what we see is that the drones, that we work on, um, yeah, cooperatively as well for yeah. governmental and military customers. We know what their potential is and we know what they could do if they were placed in the wrong hands. And seeing that, um, that they, their technology gets better in terms of 
um, reduced sizes, um, enhanced speed, um, and this warm technology, um, we believe that it's really necessary that we compete in this arms race and that we stay up to date and that we, um, we as the counter drone industry, evolve as dynamically and make sure that we are up to the challenge today and particularly in the future. We're happy to help in that. Now, if we look at the total solution, the ideal solution, likely to be a part of uh, an integration of multiple sensors. But if we look at the radar itself, what is important to you as a system integrator? Yeah, so what we learned in the last operations and the mission experience we gathered is that radar is one of the most important sensors simply because it enables us to detect or drones independent of their control mechanism. Yeah. And we learned with radar that we are particularly in need of radars that provide us with a 360 coverage and height information, so a okay. 3D capability. Um, we believe that we need automatic classification urgently and absolutely necessary um, for um, uh, the full picture and for fusioning the data that comes from different sensors. We need that pre-classification from the radar. Uh, and last but not least, we need a, a compelling form factor. So okay. we need radars that are that are um, reduced in size, but not lacking in uh, in range, in classification range, in detection ranges, because we see that there are scenarios where we need to take the radar into the field, where we'll have um, faster moving units that have to take the radar with them and have to carry them with um, a form factor that actually appeals to them in different scenarios. Thank you very much, Daniela. The next expert in our studio is Marijn Verbaand. He has a long history in ground-based air defense, including missions in Afghanistan. He is now a senior subject matter expert on counter UES within the Dutch Ministry of Defense. Marijn, welcome in our studio. Okay, thank you very much. Very good. I thought I lost you there for a moment, Brian. Um, did you sleep well last night? I slept very well. And uh, that's due to the fact that uh, we both are going to uh, make sure that, um, well, um, the world of, or at least uh, Netherlands will be safe because we will take care of it uh, against uh, rogue drones. Let's do that. If you look at that problem, the whole countering drone uh, uh, issue, uh, what is your vision on how that challenge is evolving uh, now and in the future? Well, um, I think that we should be able to keep, uh, keep up the pace with the adversaries. They will um, stay, uh, they, will, they will keep finding new ways to, uh, to challenge us. And we will have to, uh, to deal with that, of course. Um, we will have to be uh, able to detect, to classify, and to mitigate uh, drones of all kinds, of all sizes, of all speeds, and in all environments. And to do that, to do that, it's it's important for us that we do that in a, a multi-sensor and a multi-effector uh, surrounding, uh, together with with central command and control. Clear. It's very clear for the whole industry to use a multi-sensor approach. We're focusing on the radar today. If you look at the ideal characteristics of a radar being part of a total solution, what is your view on that? What should a, what should a radar look like? Uh, for us, it's important that the, the radar is, um, is able, as I told, to classify, to, to detect and classify yep all kinds of uh, drones, from very small ones until uh, the bigger ones. And it must be easy to integrate it into a system with all the other sensors and effectors. Um, next to that, it's important that the radar will be able to, uh, uh, as Iris is a three-day radar, not only to give us the X and the I, but the Z aspect as well. So the height information, is, uh, is important for us. Now, I think I know the answer, Marijn, but why is height information important? Uh, that's, that's particularly important because if we want to uh, use the information of the radar for uh, queuing on a camera system or a weapon system, 
It has to be very accurate, and it's not enough only to have the location, but we have to have the height information as well to be quick yeah. and, and smooth in, in mitigating the, the rogue drones. Thank you very much, Marijn. Fantastic to have you here. If we zoom out and see what we've learned from talking to experts in the field and also to potential customers and our resellers, we've come to conclude that there are three elements that are very important for the ideal drone detection radar. One is to have full 3D uh, detection, meaning accurate height information. Secondly, when looking at coverage, we need a full dome coverage, including the ability to detect hovering drones. And finally, a drone radar should be easy to integrate and easy to deploy. And that means being compact in size and lightweight. Now, there are some great radars out there and some less good ones too. They all seem very expensive and find it difficult to tell drones apart from birds. And detecting a hoovering drone seems near impossible. All current radars seem to have in common an inherent trade-off in capabilities. If you want long range, you typically end up with a really big and heavy radar. Having 360 degrees coverage requires you to install multiple radars at one location. And a lightweight radar often means less power and shorter range. So if you are responsible to select the right sensor to do the job, I wish you good luck. It's always a compromise. When we started developing our brand new radar in secret over the last three years, we challenged our engineers not to compromise, under no circumstances. We call her IRIS, a 3D drone detection radar that will not let any drones through undetected. We just can't take the risk of any malicious organization stealing our secrets and being a threat and danger. The security threat in my profession has changed radically in the past five years. Really radically. Why? In one word. Drones. Thanks. Not that we have to deal with these things every day right now. Not yet, anyway. But the threat is always present. You just never know when a drone might turn up. So we always have to assume the worst. And that creates stress, a lot of stress, and less sleep. We simply cannot make mistakes. The stakes are too high now. If there's a drone, we need to know about it immediately. We need to know exactly where it is and where it's going. We need a system that detects all drones all of the time. And it needs to play well with our existing systems and drone countermeasures. Such a system does not yet exist. Or rather, did not exist until now. We recently wrapped up testing with IRIS the latest 3D drone radar that combines micro Doppler classification with a huge 360 degree coverage volume. It covers all directions, all at the same time. It even detects hovering drones. None of the other radars we tested could do that. Finally, a drone radar we can depend on that won't let any drones through undetected. Uh, now I can sleep. Because Iris doesn't. And now, I think I've kept you hanging long enough. Let's go and meet her. Here she is, Iris. And for the sake of clarity, this is not a scale model. This is the real deal. Hello, I'm Iris, a 3D drone detection radar. 
Hi, Iris. Welcome on stage. Thank you, Sita. It's good to finally be here. Iris, tell me, what makes you so different from any other radar out there? Well, first of all, I have a huge coverage volume, 360 degrees in azimuth and 60 degrees in elevation. Sounds good, but you're not the only one who can do that, right? No. Although most other drone radars only cover around 100 degrees, there are indeed some other radars that cover 360. And there's a couple that have a high elevation coverage too. Okay, so what else makes you unique? I track drones in 3D and provide height information to all targets. But you're not the only radar that can do that, right? Well, no, but I do think I track height information more accurately than the others. And what about distinguishing birds from drones? Can you do that automatically all by yourself? Yes, I use micro Doppler classification to check if flying objects have propellers or not. It's also what I use to detect and track hovering drones. This definitely separates the men from the boys. I agree. And when you were tested over the last few months by our partners, what made them love you so much? Well, I'm rather petite for a radar. Small, lightweight, easy to handle, easy to deploy and move around. That sounds fantastic. So overall, what makes you so special? Well, I'm the only radar in the world that combines all of these important capabilities into one single but very capable package. Excellent. Thank you, Iris. So let's go and take a look at some of Iris's features, starting by a look under the hood. The first thing you notice is that there are two transceivers built in back to back. You see, our engineers had to deal with a trade-off between classification capabilities and tracking capabilities. For tracking, so visualizing the drone's flight path in real time, you want to have a radar rotating fast, because with every rotation you get another data point. But for classification, you want to have time on target, so needing the radar to slowly go over the target, allowing you to identify speed differences within the object. Because those speed differences unveil the presence of rotor blades, hence drones. So we challenged our engineers, and they came up with this unique and patented design with radars on both sides. That means that every target is seen twice in one rotation combining a high update rate with the ability to do classification. And this is what you get. I love this image. It was taken at a recent NATO trial where we participated. And it so happened to be that Anya, one of our account managers, had her birthday that day. So one of our drone pilots flew her name literally in the sky. And this is what you get no breaks in the tracks, and all birds are correctly classified in green, and only the drone is turned red. Remember, no compromise. Now, Iris told us about her 60 degree elevation coverage. Let's see how that looks like visually. Doesn't that look cool? There's almost no cone of silence anymore. And that means that the chances of a drone coming in over the top of the radar is very unlikely. A problem that many other radars have these days. Now let's zoom out for a moment. The instrumented range of IRIS is 5 kilometers, and we can detect drones up to 4 kilometers. The classification range, so being able to distinguish birds from drones, is 1.4 kilometers. But don't be surprised if we can push that up to 2 kilometers. Because this is a future-proof radar. We can boost performance by software updates only. And boy, are there some nice software upgrades already in the planning. Birds and other moving targets that are not drones are visualized as a green track. As a user, you can choose whether or not you want this to be visualized in the drone viewer software. A drone is visualized as a red track, and you will also be represented with an audio and visual alert. Radar is clearly the sensor to have if you want long-range detection. 
but there's a couple of things you need to know about range. First of all, range is expensive. If you double the range of a radar, it will quadruple the price, and that's not always sensible. Secondly, if you ask about range, the answer is often in terms of instrumented range or detection range. But what really matters is classification range. At what distance can the radar distinguish birds from drones? And since all radars require line of sight, what really matters is coverage. Our design philosophy is that it makes more sense to combine multiple cost-efficient radars to create the best coverage than to have one super expensive radar that doesn't cover the entire area of interest. So let's, let's look at here what happens. Here you have multiple IRIS radars working together to not only extend coverage and detection range, but also to cover off any radar gaps that need filling, like the gap caused by this hill or buildings, for example. Now I can talk about IRIS all afternoon, but I hear that we have a couple of questions in the chat. So let's take the first question. I will repeat the question for all the other participants. The question is, is IRIS already available for purchase? Yes, we sold the first IRIS actually already to a launching customer in defense and security. Uh, and it will be available for purchase from today on. First deliveries to be expected in early 2021. Second question is, if the radar is mil-spec, at the moment, IRIS is designed to be a mil-spec radar, but not certified as such yet. That will happen later next year. Third question, is involving export control. Is IRIS export controlled? Yes, it is. It is considered a dual-use radar because we add height information to non-cooperative targets, so it does require an export license. Can we take one more question? Yeah. Interesting question. The question is, does Iris, uh, is Iris going to replace Elvira in our product portfolio? No, it's actually not. We see a lot of room for Elvira as a cost-efficient 2D drone radar, which is not export controlled. So it will be both part of our portfolio. So that is all the questions we have time for at the moment, and also because I have a few questions remaining myself. Because over the last months, the experts we had in the launch event previously have been able to actually test IRIS. So let's go back to Daniela from ESG and ask what her findings are. Daniela, um, I just mentioned uh, to the rest of the audience that you, as our partner on, on global rollout, have been able to actually look at IRIS, use it and test it over the last couple of months. Can you share your findings? Yeah, thank you, Sita. So we are really excited and very happy that we got that chance to have a, a preview look at IRIS. And we were really happy to see that the, the feedback our customers that we gave over the years was um, implemented so quickly and so dynamically by you, um, seeing that we now have a weight and an amazing form factor um, with this reduced size uh, and weight. So it's um, even easier to take IRIS into the field with us and use different scenarios and very flexibly. And we're very happy to see that despite this reduced size, we still have similar ranges and enhanced capabilities, particularly with the height information that we see now and the same classification capabilities that we um, found so very helpful and um, capable in the past with your other product lines. Thank you very much, Daniela. You made my day. We go to our next expert, Marijn Verbaand, um, part of the drone expert team. Hi, Marijn. Uh, over the last couple of months before the official launch, you have also been able to test um, IRIS in the field in uh, various situations. Can you share some of your experiences with using IRIS in live situations? Um, when we look at uh, the IRIS radar at this moment, it is uh, able to detect and classify 
uh, on a, a swift and smooth way. Um, uh, and it can, uh, it, it's very easy to use for us. It's easy to use for um, operators without any background in radar technology. Um, and, and of course, it's very useful for people who are very into the technique. Um, as we can see, it is, um, it's, its performance is uh, very well on moving targets, on uh, static targets as well, and even uh, multiple targets uh, are detected and classified very well at this moment. And Marijn, if you look at the size of a radar, does that uh, matter to you? Is that relevant? For us, it's important because uh, a radar can be used in static solutions, but in mobile solutions as well. And because it's not too big, it's not too heavy, it can be transported very easily. So you can take it with you um, into another country or uh, when we're going abroad, any, anything what we would like. And thank you very much for sharing your uh, experiences with Iris and also the feedback we got from you and your team during the development phase. Thank you very much. Now, I don't have any further questions anymore, but you probably have those about Iris. So my team and myself will be available in the live chat from now on. And you can also go to the virtual Robin Lounge where you can review all the content that we've shared and also discover some new content. Now, before leaving you with a mini documentary on the making of Iris, I want to thank you very much for being with us today, and I hope to see many of you soon.